sorry. Good morning. I want you to tell, I'm going to tell you something. I am so proud of these children, every one of them. They're all excited. You know what they're excited about? Thanksgiving dinners. They said, we want to be up there. We want to show the turkeys. We want to show all the stuff we've got here. Even little Elena here, she's got her can of cranberry sauce. All of them's up here. And of course, we got the Mr. and Mrs. Turkey here today. And they, I am think they're people starting to call me Turkey Woman. I, I've got the little bitty ones and I got the big ones too, Ron. And I even got you out there where you used to could gobble. But we're up here and I'm excited about, you know, it, made me, it just thrills me when I say, when I hear the kids getting involved, they're excited about it. Next Sunday is our last Sunday. We'll be giving out turkey dinners that Monday. So if you've got anything you want to bring, bring it. Uh, names are still coming in, especially if you know anybody. We want to minister to people. If you know anybody that needs a dinner, please let me know. You can let Phyllis know or the preacher know. Um, you know, because we, we, what we have now, as you can see, some of the kids have got some of the stuff, cake mix. Uh, most, next week is supposed to be bread, and that's usually the last thing because we want the freshest bread that we can get to them on that Monday. But please bring your stuff, and we always like money. Always. Because what we, what we don't get in, we take and take that money and buy and pay for the turkeys. And, you know, uh, uh, it's such a blessing. And this is remedy going outside these walls. That's the way I look at it, Brother Vance. We're ministering to others. And you can see the kids are excited about it. I don't care what y'all, whether y'all are or not. And I'm telling you, if they're excited, you should be excited too about it. Because we're ministering. So please remember, next Sunday is the last Sunday. And then I've got different people lined up. We'll be delivering. I can deliver or they can come and pick up. But I need to know how many's in the family. If you get a name, how many's in the family. And we'll be giving all this away. And I promise you, everything that comes in, it goes out. It goes out. Every bit of it comes in. You might think, well, you might have a little bit more of this. Well, we have families. I've got one family now. I know there's seven in that family. So, of course, it takes a little bit more for that family than it does one with two. So we make sure we get everything comes in, it goes out, and God will bless you. And like I said, I'm proud of the kids. I wasn't expecting this this morning. Brother Eddie, they said, where's the turkeys? Where's the stuff? We want to go, didn't we? They want to be up. I said, fine, I got, me a, I got me an army coming up. And you know, one day I'm not going to be here, but here's the future. This is now, right now, right now. This is it. I praise the Lord for it. Okay, you can put there. And we go back down that ramp and sit down. Just carry that down. Just follow that. Yes. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> Thank God for workers in the kingdom. Amen. Even if they're five or ten or a hundred and twenty, right? <clears throat> Amen. Stand with us worship reverence for the Lord Almighty this morning I'm thankful to be able to come together to praise him you know there's seven different words for praise in the Bible Yada means to praise him with hands extended let the peoples praise you oh God let the peoples praise you praise you with extended hands even when it's uncomfortable right because he commands us to praise him that's why we're here I don't want the rocks to cry out in my place amen I'm here to praise him that's what I'm gonna do no matter what I feel like hallelujah amen thank you Jesus for the opportunity to praise you oh God we praise your name right now would you just lift up your hands and give him a yada praise this morning? God, thank you, Lord. You are worthy and mighty and holy and magnificent and wonderful. We praise your name this morning for who you are. Just because we have the privilege to praise you, God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm excited to be able to praise him. 
we come together to praise him to worship his name amen this morning we gather in this house this building is not the church but we are the church his people are the church he said forsake yourselves not the assembly together but come together to praise him amen house would praise Jesus like he's not in the grave anymore let me explain something real quick you have the privilege to worship Ah, your your ability to get into the presence of God came with a price let me explain what I'm talking about give me two minutes and I'm gonna get out your way back in the day everybody say back in the day they had a system And they had what they called the high priest. And the high priest only once a year would come in and and give the people's petitions unto the Father. 
there was a veil that was there and he had to go in and when he went in brother Wayne he had to take blood not only for them but also for himself to sprinkle upon the mercy seat to be able to come into the presence of God let me read you something real quick before I get too happy in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15 it says therefore everybody say therefore let us offer through Jesus a continual say continual sacrifice of praise proclaiming our allegiance to his name let me break it down and explain what that means Jesus is our high priest and when Jesus Christ hung on the cross and he died a penalty that you were supposed to take that he took your place when he died and that blood flowed Jesse that veil began to rip so that through Jesus we can come into the presence of God and we can worship God with liberty maybe you don't understand what I'm saying this morning I need you to bump your neighbor real quick and I want you to say this say neighbor God has been too good to me for me to sit here like a knot on a log give me some room while I shout while I dance while I lift up my I wish somebody in this house would remember where God found you do you understand what I'm talking about your name is written in your name is written in the Lamb's book of life so when it says continual sacrifice of praise sacrifice don't mean it's going to be easy my Jesus if life was easy everybody would do it Sometimes life will put the squeeze on you. But it's in those moments where you say, God, I'm going to give a sacrifice of praise. And when you lift up your hands, Aaliyah, and you begin to magnify the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the risen Savior, our soon coming King. I love what the word said. It said one day every knee is going to bow on heaven in earth and under the earth that's going to bow and that's going to declare that Jesus Christ is Lord and while we're here I don't know about you sister Megan but I want to give God everything I got so for the next few moments stop listening to me stop waiting on me to say something that's going to get you happy if you're waiting on me to say something you don't miss the ship if you can just think about the goodness of God Josh remember where God found you lift up your hands in this house and begin to give God some glory Father, we honor you this morning. We bless your name. Oh, come on, Remedy Church. In the name of Jesus, Father, we welcome your Holy Spirit in this house. But, Father, we want to offer up a sacrifice of praise. We want to give your name glory. Thank you, Jesus, for coming out of the grave and giving us victory over all things. So for the remainder of this service, God, we're in, we're in response to you in coming down here. So we give your name glory. We give your name praise. Thank you for finding me. Thank you for the blood. And God, we're just going to give you praise this morning, God, in this house.
wonderful. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy. Just lift your hands this morning. Come on, kid. You just say, here I am, Lord. All of my problems, all of my flesh, all of my humanity, every part of me, God. Every part of me. God is not frightened or hesitant to take you just as you are. He 
is not frightened by your past. He is not afraid of your failures. He is not afraid or does not shy away from the places that you lack in. He is a holy God that came to you and has said, you are my son, you are my daughter. Even when things aren't going the right way, even when you're not doing what I want you to do, you're still a son, you're still a daughter. It doesn't change who you are. Can you just lift up your hands and say, God, here I am. couple of days ago I, I said Let, let's get the elephant out of the room Israel was wonderful thank you so much for allowing me to go but I told somebody while I was over there I said you know as Americans I think most of our time in faith is spent trying to convince ourselves that what we're t talking about and saying is true anybody ever felt that way before you ever sat down and go man what what if it's all a lie what if it's all, Pastor, I can't believe you're saying that right. What if, it's, what if it's all not true? What if everything that we've been talking about, everything that's being preached, everything we're singing about, what if it's just something that we've bought? Anybody ever had a moment like that? And I said, I think that most of our time is spent trying to convince ourselves that our faith is real, that our faith is true. Two days ago, I walked inside of an empty tomb. I'm telling you, it's real. It's all real. I walked inside of an empty tomb and I walked back out and I thought, you know, there's a lot of people that could say I was crucified on the, on the streets of Jerusalem, but there's only one man that can say I come walking out of a tomb. There's only one that can make that claim. And his name is Jesus. Oh, it's all real. It's all real. Friday morning I stood in the valley of Elah where David slayed a giant. my backpack at home I've got three smooth stones from the same brook that David picked rocks up from and slayed the giant Goliath I've walked the streets of, of a place I can't describe it to you I know there's a time and a place for this but I'm just so moved by this past week it changed my life I can't tell you 
what it feels like to travel halfway across the world and not know anybody or anything that I'm about to walk into and yet it feels like home we drove up the mountain Jerusalem sits on on a mountain higher than everything it overlooks and there's tunnels that run through the mountain and as you come in I was telling sister Phyllis this morning as you come into the city you go through that tunnel and it opens up and it's just an expanse of a city and as I rode on that bus and I looked off to the hill to my left I said this has got to be a, just a glimpse of what heaven's gonna feel like it's real if you've ever had a question I'm telling you it's real it changed me I'm look we talk all the time about connecting the physical to the spiritual. And it's not just about a trip I've took. I'm telling you that right now, in the physical, when you begin to lift your hands and you begin to declare that Jesus Christ is King, the atmosphere begins to change. Because I'm thankful that He's not a God that inhabits just a city or just a country but he is a God that will meet you where you are he will meet you as you are I'm telling you it's real come on as we lift our hands just one more time can you just submit yourself to him today can you just give yourself away to him here I am to worship Lord here I am to bow down oh you're my God God we give ourselves away Jesus we worship Father we just give you glory in this moment we thank you this morning I thank you that I get to be here today God I pray that you would touch the remainder of this service God touch Pastor Alex as he brings the word this morning anoint him to speak God anoint your people today to hear you father to worship you in spirit and in the truth the truth that Jesus lives today Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. Brother Mitch, if you could turn the lights on in the back for me there. I want you to find 10 people this morning. I want you to hug their neck. I want you to tell them you're glad to see them in God's house today. How wonderful it is to be together at Remedy Church this Sunday morning. this morning we're going to continue on in worship with giving this morning the giving of our tithes and of our offering today I'm going to ask our ushers to join me this morning as we give unto the Lord I just want to say one more time thank you so much for the incredible gift of this past week and I'm just so glad that I get to be here with you this morning. There's no place, as, as wonderful as it was, there's no place I'd rather be this morning than with you. And I'm so thankful that I get to be here and um, I'm sure over the next several days, months, maybe year, 
I'll still be processing. We'll still be, I'll still be talking about it, and um, it's just a wonderful thing. But we want to give unto the Lord this morning. Do you know that as we're faithful to God, that He He blesses, He pours out blessings. You understand that? Corporately, as a church, as we're faithful to Him in every facet of our lives, every area. When I give of my time and I give of my energy, if I give of my finances, God pours out blessings. Can somebody give me a hearty amen? You've been blessed because you bless Him. We talk a lot about giving, tithes, and offering is something that a lot of people don't want to touch. I'm telling you this morning, you want God to get inside your checkbook? Give unto the Lord. You want God to get in and give you favor and, and, and all of these things that we talk? Get in your checkbook and start giving unto the Lord, okay? I feel boldness in that this morning. That if I want God to touch me in every area of my life, I've got to give every area to Him, amen? So this morning we're gonna give. If this is your first time with us, thank you for joining us for worship. Can we just give them a hand remedy and welcome them if this, if this is our first time? All of our guests who may be here. I'm so thankful that we've We've all come together. There's a, a prayer card in your bulletin. We'd love for you to fill that out. We want to partner with you in prayer. We know that God's going to move in your life because we know that He moves when we pray. And so we're, we're gathering together and we're going to pray with you. We're going to support you and lift you up. We just want you to slide that prayer card into the offering bag and slide by the, the table on the way out. And get your free t-shirt. Good stuff. But I want us to give unto the Lord today. I hope the Holy Spirit has spoken to you today as to what He would have you to give. And I want to pray over the offering and ask God to bless it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we just ask you today, God, to bless each and every person under the sound of my voice. But God, bless the giver today. Lord, as we sow seeds into the kingdom, Lord, we know that your word won't return void. So the, the seed that we're sowing, we know it helps the word to go forth. So because of that seed, the word goes forth and it doesn't return void, God, but it goes for the changing of lives, God, salvation and, and deliverance, miracles, signs and wonders. And Father, I pray that you would bless this house. Bless this house, God, as we give corporately to you. God, help us to refresh and renew our commitment to you each and every week. Lord, don't let this just be something we do to go through the motions, but God, let it be an act of worship on the hearts of your people. God, we give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you as you give this morning. Welcome to Remedy. We're happy you've chosen to worship with us today. We would like to welcome Pastor Killian back from his exciting trip to Israel. If you are new to Remedy, we'd like to welcome you to our church. We hope you received a bulletin. There is a tab in your bulletin with a prayer card attached. We'd love to partner with you in praying for any requests that you'd like to share with us. Please fill out the prayer card and place it in the offering bag, or you can take it to the Connect Center at the end of service to receive a free Remedy t-shirt. Our annual Thanksgiving meals giveaway has begun. Please check your bulletin for the list of items needed. Any food donations will be distributed to families in need. If you would rather give a financial donation towards this ministry, it is always appreciated. If you know of any families in need, please see Sister Kay Garman. All items will be given out to families on November 19th. We will be having a Thanksgiving lunch on November 18th after morning service. Please bring drinks, dessert, or a side dish. Meats will be provided. Have a favorite Thanksgiving memory? We will be sharing these with our Remedy family. This year, we will be doing a church-wide Secret Santa. Please sign up by November 25th. See Sister Megan Killian for details. Don't forget the practice sessions for the Christmas play. Next practice will be November 11th. Check your bulletin for all practice dates and times. This year's Christmas program, The Reason Why, will be held on December 22nd and 23rd. Kannapolis District Fellowship Meeting will be November 18th at 6 o'clock in the Enochville Church of God. The address is 199 North Enochville Avenue, Kannapolis, North Carolina. Any donations to our toy drive after October will go to next year's Better to Give. Our Christmas giveaway for Better to Give will be Saturday, December 8th. There are opportunities 
to serve including welcome committee, toy stations, gift wrapping, and prayer station. Let Pastor Killian or Sister Phyllis know if you would like to sign up. Remedy Kids are now dismissed. As our, as our kids are being dismissed, I wanted to hop back up here one more time, just real quick. I want to remind you of all the things that are coming up. On December 8th, we will have our, our Better to Give Christmas giveaway. I want to kind of give you an update. We are right at 60 kids signed up for our giveaway this year. I'm so thankful for that. We're going to be going shopping for these kids, but we've partnered with several schools this year. We, we're, how many of you are thankful and, and just grateful that the Lord, when He gets in something, it grows and expands? Last year, yeah, amen. Last year we partnered with the Cabarrus Early College of Technology. We're partnered again with them this year. Uh, that's an ongoing partnership, but I'm talking about for better to give. This year, we've got several schools that we're partnered with, and I'm so thankful that God continues to open doors for this because it reveals that people have a need. Amen. So we have close to 60 kids signed up um, for that. I want to clarify something. I know we said see Sister Phyllis or myself to sign up. I'm going to direct you to my wife. I want you to see Megan if you want to sign up for better to give to serve in any way. She's going to be putting that together. She's really good at that. She's, she's really good at putting stuff together. She's better than I am. So I'm handing it to her. She, just see her if you want to, to help with that. I know Sister Kay probably needs help with the Thanksgiving meals, putting them together and getting those ready. That's coming up. So if you want to help with that, just see Sister Kay. There's a lot of opportunities to serve. But I, I'm just so thankful that, that we have these opportunities to come up, that are coming up to serve our community. So that's what it's all about. Because we give these gifts... But it's not about the gift that they're getting that's being wrapped. It's about the gift of Jesus Christ that we're giving them while they're here. And so I'm thankful for, for these opportunities. The other thing that I want to say is our Christmas program is coming up. Last year, this house was full two times. Full two times. That happened because you invited people. I'm just, I'm, I'm begging you and pleading you this morning. Start inviting now. Start making plans now because people make Christmas plans way in advance, right? So I want you to begin to look at your circles of influence. Look at the people who need to hear about the story of Jesus, right? Don't just invite your saved friends. Invite your friends that, that don't know anything about Jesus because they need to hear this story. December 22nd and 23rd is when this is going to be happening. Uh, we're we're going to have skits and we're going to have music. And our choir sounds awesome, let me just tell you. We've got about a 30-person choir this year. And uh, it's going to be just such a wonderful time. But we want you to fill the house this year to hear the story of Jesus and His coming. And uh, we're so thankful today. I'm thankful. Let me. Just, I don't know if you are, but I'm thankful that we have men in this house that can step in and and carry the word of the Lord when I'm not here. And uh, I, just how many of you enjoyed Bishop Nathan Atwood last week, the missionary from Honduras? He did a wonderful job. Such he's got such a sweet spirit about him. I, I love I love that man. But uh, I'm thankful today for another person that can uh, step into the pulpit and just preach with the fire of God in his heart. And I'm going to ask Pastor Alex to come on up. But Come on, let's give Pastor Alex a hand and thank the Lord for him. He's going to be preaching for us today, and I know he's got a word for you. Now, that was okay for me, but somebody one time, will you just give glory for God in this house this morning? Because without Jesus, we're absolutely nothing. This is why we come here. Amen, 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 amen. Uh, before I get started, I want, to, I want to honor the man of God of the house and also our first lady. I, I know that Pastor Cody does not take this place. He, call, he, he places it, it, it's sacred. He doesn't just let anybody just come and feel his shoes. Although I wear 13, I don't know what you're rolling with. But, um, um, so I want to say thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity. And I'm so excited and halfway jealous 
of pastor being able to go to Israel. And, and when I say that, the Bible talks about there was living testimonies of things they seen. He is the only one in this building, as far as I know, that has been to Israel and actually walked into the tomb and seen it empty. And when I said seen it empty, it wasn't that there was bones in there. There was no clothes. It is empty. And I declare this over this house and over you, greater is still to come. Maybe you don't understand what I'm saying, but see, in order for the house to be blessed, the head has got to be blessed first. So when my pastor went over to Israel, he wasn't going on a vacation. Maybe you thought you were sending him on a trip, but God says, I have preordained this. I need Pastor Cody to go, and I want him to visualize. I want him to see. I want him to get in the Jordan where I was baptized. I want him to go down, and I want him to come back up so that when he steps foot back in the remedy, there is a fire that's not going to be contained within these walls the, uh, we've only seen a preliminary of things to come and when the man, they're not excited as I am but when the head is blessed then the leadership is blessed then when the crack addict that comes in off the street can't help but to leave chains outside the door that when he comes in he may not even understand the Holy Ghost is going to convict his spirit convict him in love and they'll find themselves coming and laying cigarettes and guns and drugs and alcohol and say you know what I can't have it no more I would rather have Jesus if you receive that word in this house all over lift your hands and just give God praise in this house thank you Jesus for what you are going to do thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus when my pastor asked me um, if I was able to preach I, I, I took it very cool and I said yes sir I appreciate the opportunity and and I promise you this and I tell my youth all the time I'll never tell you something just because God began to deal with me about something and you just, I couldn't get away from it so I have a word and I don't know who you are I think it's a word individually but I also feel like it's a word corporately so I don't know what I don't know what you came in here with but I rebuke every distraction and I'm asking you if I have a football and I throw it to you and your hands is down you ain't gonna catch it so can we make up in our mind in this house they're going we're gonna receive and catch the word of the Lord today can we just go ahead and cast off every weight forget about what's going on after church and say God I'm coming here to receive whatever it is that you have for me teach me make me break me whatever you want to do God I'm here I'm yours this is your time and I just give your name glory and I give your name praise Father, in the next few moments, I am going to do the very best that I can with your help, God, to deliver the message that you have poured inside of me. I'm praying, God, that what you have poured inside of me would begin to pour out and it will begin to flow. And it will not, in the name of Jesus, fall on deaf ears this morning. Liberty is in the house. Your hand is on this service, God. And I pray deliverance and I pray blessing, God, and understanding and wisdom in this house. In the powerful, mighty name of Jesus in the house said, amen, 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 amen. Amen. Give it up for Sister Heather. I kind of threw a curveball at her. She was waiting on me, and uh, that was that was pathetic. I said, "Give Heather a, a thank you." <laughs> Lord, have mercy. All right. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in God's house. I, I always feel it honored and privileged to stand before and deliver a message. And I'm just a vessel, um, just a vessel wanting to be used by God. And I love Jesus, and I, and I love uh, bringing forth his message and his word. But I need you to do me a favor. Are you ready? I got 30% of that, Sister Phyllis. You know, if the Tar Heels are playing, it's okay. Or I'm not even going to pronounce Duke because that's devilish stuff, and we're not having this in the house. <laughs> if, if, if Georgia football is playing or the Panthers are playing, and, and I know – Thursday night, all you Panther fans, when they drove down the field and scored a touchdown, they was losing their mind. Yeah, keep it pounding, woo! And that was about it, you know? <laughs> and, and the first play that Pittsburgh threw 
touchdown. I said, Lord, have mercy. I was sitting on the couch, next possession. I said, pick six, here it comes. And sure enough, Cam with his sorry self, it's all right, it's all right, we'll talk after service. He threw a pick six, you know, and I knew, I knew they was upset, yelling at the TV, throwing potato chips on the floor. So when I ask you, are you ready for the word? It should be more exciting to you because this brings forth life. And, you know, football's a game. You win some, you lose some, but at the end of the day, Jesus still is on the throne, and that's all that matters. So let me do it again. Are you ready for the word? Yeah. Amen. That's more like it. That's more like it. I need you to bump your neighbor if you can. You may get used to it, so if you have a neighbor you don't like, you're going to get to used to them today. You're going to like them today, and if that's your spouse, <laughs> leave your problems at the house. Man, I didn't, that's all right. You know, I was kind of, never mind, that's kind of the hood coming out of me, but that's all right. Um, but uh, I need you to bump your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's not too late. Amen. Amen. Uh, the scripture I'm going to come from this morning is found in Joshua chapter 3, verse 17. I'm reading out the NLT version. It's up on the screen. And it says this. It says, meanwhile... The priests who were carrying the Ark of the Lord's Covenant stood on dry ground in the middle of the riverbed as the people passed by. They waited there until the whole nation, everybody say whole nation, of Israel had crossed the Jordan on dry ground. Amen. I want to make sure I was right. <laughs> When we was putting it up there, it was like two slides. So I was waiting for the slip, and I had my word over here, but that's okay. All right. So, anyway, this is the story that God began to stir in my spirit, and I could not shake it. I had something else that I had written down. I was uh, being able to, ready to preach, and I was going to do it. But I'm telling you, when, when you do something like that, and the Holy Ghost ain't in it, there's no fruit, there's no life, you have got to speak the word that God gives you for such a time as this. And this is where he led me to. So if you give me for the next few moments, I'm going to try my best with the Holy Ghost's help to attempt to share with you what he was saying. Are you ready? Amen. Amen. I need to keen in on where it says they waited there until the whole nation of Israel had crossed the Jordan on dry ground. I want you to get that in your spirit, and I want this up here, because we're going to come back to it in just a little bit, a little bit, okay? Okay? All right, listen, listen. I know when Rufus is out here, you know, he's a little bit more obnoxious than I am, and, uh, but in just a little bit, they're going, to, uh, they're going to get it, all right? I like to be loud and obnoxious, but I love Jesus, and it's okay, all right? See? All right, so I need to share with you the history of how the children of Israel got there. Before we get to this point, I want you to understand that the children of Israel were God's people. God had set them up for greatness. He had set them up to give them the promised land. He, he had set them up to lead God and direct love and nurture. He has set them up for that. He has done the exact same thing for you. And what was going on is that they continued to not listen, and they continued to go back and forth. And Moses was their leader at this, at this time before this happened. Moses was their leader, and he had set them free. He had set them free from Egypt, from captivity. This was a place that they went to, and they was beaten, and they was forced to be slaves and, and, and do the things. And, they was, and when Moses stepped on the scene, it changed the whole direction because they thought they were stuck there. But God had gave a promise. Let me say that again, Sister Jane. God had gave them a promise. And he had already spoken to Abraham before. And he said that they were going to go into this place. But they wasn't going to stay there. Maybe that don't get you. But hold on. You're going to get it in a minute. But they wasn't going to stay there. You may be in a place right now that feels uncomfortable. And it may hurt. And it may feel bad but how many people know that god's promises are yes and amen yes. all of god's promises prove true it is yes and amen god's promise does not fail his word cannot lie amen amen, amen. so they was in egypt and moses stepped on the scene and and they was taken out and they came to the red sea and we all know the story the red sea parted and they walked across and they was on their way to the promised land. 
They're on their way. And as they were on their way, the theologians have said that it was supposed to be, I believe, 11 day journey from where they was at to where they were going. My Jesus, if I knew it would take 11 days for me to get here to there, I think I'm just going to deal with what I got to deal with and just get through it. But see, what their problem was is that they continued to have trust issues. And when things would go wrong, they continued to revert back. Help me in here, Holy Ghost. They continued to re revert back to the very nature of what God had brought them from. And then they expect to have the promise and the fullness of God continuing to do the same things over and over and over again. Let me tell somebody in here something real quick. I didn't plan on saying this. When God gives you a test, the test is meant for you to pass. If you fail, guess what? You're going to come back around and that test is going to come back up. He doesn't give you a test, Brother Philip, that makes you, okay, he failed, well, he didn't get that. There's a reason for it so that when, when you pass it, there's something he's going to give you after does that make sense? Okay, so they continue to go on, and, and, and people get in their mindset that, you know what, I can, have, I can have God's promises. I can be full of his grace and his mercy. I can have it. I can have it. I can have it. But I still want to do this, and I still want to do that. And they, as a result, they could not receive all that God had for them. As the result of their actions, they could not receive all that God had for them. All right? So God was always wanting to lead them to the promised land. It wasn't that God, okay, you failed once. Oh, psh, well, Phyllis just didn't get it. Jeez, I'm just going to move on to the next. No. See, there's purpose. And how many people know that God don't show favoritism? I'm so thankful for that because... I, I'm loved just as much as my pastor is. Pastors love just as much as the prostitute down the street. Somebody in here help me. You, and, and God's grace is still sufficient for this day. And, and God don't show favoritism. And, and, and people get so twisted because they think it's about a position or they think it's about a microphone or they think this and they think that. Well, I'm an elder in the deacon board. Who cares? Who cares? I'm going to tell you something in front of my pastor. I, now, don't get me wrong. I love to preach. But if God says, Alex, you're done. I'd rather have Jesus. I would give this all up if I could just have Jesus. Maybe that don't make no sense to you in here, but it's making sense to me. If I, if I know my pastor correctly, if, if God came down and said, Pastor, you've done a great job, Cody. You've done a great job, Pastor and Remedy, but now I want you to be done. I got another direction. Now, he may get in his feelings for a minute because I know he has a pastor's heart. You know, and Jeremiah said that, can I help real quick? I'm going to help somebody real quick. I didn't plan on saying this, so I don't know all who it's for. The Bible says that God, everybody say God. God, God don't lie, right? God says, I'm going to give you pastors after my own heart. If this man of God was not supposed to be here, he would not be here. I, I, I'm just speaking what the Holy Ghost is telling me to say here. Because he says, I'm going to give you pastors of your own heart. All right? But if my pastor is called by God and God says, okay, now I need you to be done, it doesn't affect his relationship with God. Because regardless if he's a pastor or he's a, a deacon on the elders board or he's a statewide evangelist, somebody like T.D. Jakes, let me tell you something. He's just a man. He's just, he's, now, now I'm not saying anything bad about him. He's got an anointing on his life, yes. But at the end of the day, and when, and when, Reality steps in and death takes hold. The only thing that matters is my name in the Lamb's book of life. So we need to get past this philosophical thing where it's about a position, where it's about a thing, where it's about a stage. If, uh, if God gives you a stage, it's not for you anyway. God gives you a stage just so that his glory can be presented in such a way that somebody else may hear the gospel. My God, use me for that purpose. If I ever get in the way of that, take it all away. My Jesus, I'm tired of spiritual pridefulness in the church. Am I okay? Am I tired of religion? I'm tired of nonsense because this type of thing, this is the type of thing that Jesus came and he condemned. He was jumping all over the Pharisees and Sadducees. He said, who do you think you are? You brought us snakes in my terminal. You big dummy. 
Who do you think you are? You think you got it? Eh. It's like Simon Cowell on, uh, on, on the thing with the X. No, bro. You missed it. Missed the whole ship. And people think if I'm, my Jesus, ah, y'all don't both shake. If I'm good enough, if I do this, if I do that. You know, sometimes, Sister Phyllis, I get it wrong. I'll fall flat on my face, but I'm so thankful that I have a Heavenly Father that will come to where I'm at and pick me up and show me love and show me grace, and He doesn't condemn me. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, but there are times God has to correct us, and when He corrects us, He corrects us in love. You can look at my notes, dude. I ain't got nothing to do with what I'm saying. This is why I love Jesus, because... When we assemble together and two or three are gathered in his name, the Holy Ghost is here. Whether you want to let him bust loose and break out, that's up to you. Hold on, Basha. Who am I talking to in here? Sometimes we come into the house of the Lord and we're so reserved. Oh, bless the Lord. Get out my face. I was an overdose acid and I was, I was a crack addict and I know where God found me. If it wasn't been for God, I'd been broke, busted, disgusted in jail. Or I'd be burning in hell. So if I come in here and shout and I praise and I dance, you can just get over your little self. And I wish somebody in the house would just remember. Sometimes we have to remind ourselves where has God brought us from because we live in the now. We are a generation of people who lives in the now. Well, this is what's going on, on with me now, so I'm going to praise God by what I feel and what's going on now. My Jesus, does not the Bible say that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever? If God brought you out back then, can he not bring you out now? Can he not bring you out tomorrow? Or what if he doesn't? Is that going to affect you from praising God? My Jesus, what if you were given a report that cancer was, was on you, stage four cancer? My Jesus, that's a hard pill to swallow. I haven't got there, so I'm not sitting there saying I'm better than anybody. But I would hope to think that if I'm given that report, yes, my God is a healer. Yes, he took the stripes upon his back. But if my God chooses not to heal, that's what I thought was so amazing about Bishop Atwood when he came here. He knew he had problems, but he said, you know what? I'm going to bless the Lord. He's worthy of my praise. If I don't praise, the rocks are going to cry out. If I... My Jesus. Can we get back to a place where we stop worrying about what people think about us? Can we get back to a place where it's about seeking the face of God and not his hand? My Jesus, there are times I feel so dry, but it's in those times. See, this is something that God kind of gave me the other day. He said, if they draw nigh unto me, I will draw nigh unto them. That doesn't mean that right when you said, bless the Lord, hallelujah, he's going to come down and fill you with the Holy Ghost. And bam, sometimes it don't work like that. You may have to tarry for a little bit. But if you make up your mind, Brother Ron, that I'm going to bless the Lord with all my soul, with everything inside of me, guess what? That gets God's attention. He can't help but to come down and say, let me come down here and bless my son. He's struggling. Let me give him some strength. Have you ever been in a place at two o'clock in the morning where you've been praying and cried all you know how to do you shook you danced you shouted at the devil you commanded them to go back to hell and problems still persisted and you didn't know what else to do and the bible says when you don't know what else to do you just stand i've had to stand and i've had to have the good holy ghost come and wrap his loving arms around me and says son it's gonna be okay you don't have to worry i've already fought the fight i've already took care of you you don't have to worry anymore i like what you say you're not shouting as good as i'm preaching We have to stop living in the now. Now, I'm not saying that, that we're not supposed to be focused on what's going on. Understand what I'm saying. We allow our situations in life, and we allow the pressures of life to affect our relationship with God. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. When we do that, I'm, I'm trying to communicate this. We basically say, God, you're a circumstantial God. And I'll bless you when it's good. But when it's going wrong, God, it's not fair. Who put you on the cross? I might not ever get invited to preach back here again. But I'm going to preach the word of the Lord. If I get over the top, Pastor, just wink at me or shoot me with a gun or something. <laughs> Who put you on the cross? Who beat you? Who pulled your beard out? Who beat you beyond recognition? He was bruised for our iniquity, our wrongdoing. 
He was crushed. Hey, And by his stripes, we're healed. Thank you, Jesus. When God, when God was in the flesh, and he came down in the form of Jesus, I'm not going to get into Trinity. That's a Wednesday night conversation. Pastor, put it on the docket. Listen, when Jesus was attached to the whipping post, he said, I, I'm doing this for Brother Ron, because there's going to come a time where he's going to need a healing. And this is the just requirement that he has to get healed, and I don't want him to do it. How many parents in here want their kids to have pain? You show me a parent like that, and I'd slap the teeth out. Okay, all right, that's, that's, that's why I'm not the pastor. Okay. <laughs> so listen, when he was attached to the whipping post, and Jesus was getting beaten. It was for your healing. And it was done so strategically because Jesus' purpose was to die on the cross. And this was like an additive bonus. Somebody help me up in here. His purpose was to die for our sins so that way we could have an opportunity to go to heaven. Notice I said opportunity. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning. We have an opportunity. God don't send nobody to hell up in here. Understand that. If, if somebody finds their self in hell, it's because they rejected the call of God and his grace and his mercy. That's why the Bible says today is the day of salvation. You don't wait till tomorrow. If the Holy Ghost begins to deal with you and begins to prick your heart, and let me tell you something, when God begins to do that, he does it in such a way of love. He does it in love. You know that the Holy Ghost is dealing with you and I need to come and lay some things down or I need to give my life, whatever it is, you know when God is dealing with you. But see, the problem, Heather, is that we run through life and we tend to... And you end up worse off than before. My Jesus is not a light switch. My God is not somebody that you can turn on and off. Well, God, I'm going to just, I, when I feel like it, no. No. Because you may not get another opportunity. It's only by God's grace that you are given time and time again. People think, well, I'll just go next week and, and the pastor will say this or Heather will sing this. And, -hoo, and I'll come to the altar, altar and cry it out. There's a difference between having an emotional experience and an encounter with God. Who am I talking to in this house? Who am I preaching to in this house? And uh, Eddie, when we respond to the call, when we respond to the call, things break off of you. Things happen. In order for things to happen in the natural, it has to be broken in the spirit first. That's why at times I come in here and, and when we do the call to worship, that's so important because regardless of what you're going through, you know, it wasn't until the children shouted that Jericho's walls fell down. And I'm not saying that you come in here and make a bunch of racket and noise. That's not what I'm saying. That's not so let's go ahead and get that out the way. But I am saying there comes a time where you have to push past your flesh and you have to push past your circumstance. And you got to say, God, I'm giving you my best. I'm giving you my all. Why? Because you gave me everything that you had. Amen. When we can get to that point, Pastor Revival is going to break out not only here, but nationwide. Does not the Bible say that in the last days I will pour out my spirit amongst all flesh? Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of that all flesh. My Jesus, I don't want to be a person who comes to church and sits on the, uh, sits on the seat every Sunday morning time and time, time and time again. And you walk in the same. You walk out the same. Nothing changes. And let me tell you what happened. There's a spirit called oppression. I don't know who I come to preach to this morning. There's a spirit called oppression. And if you're not careful, that thing will grab hold of you and he'll put a weight on you. It'll begin to squeeze the very life out of you. And the life that's left in you is, is the Holy Ghost. But if you continue to allow oppression to push you down, in the squeeze it's going to squeeze the life out of you and then one day you're going to wake up help me holy ghost one day you're going to wake up and figure out how in the world did i get to this point 
It's because you're rejecting the call of God. Oh, that's kind of harsh, Pastor Alex. You know what? I believe in telling the truth. And I don't believe in sugarcoating nothing. I'm doing my very best. So if you're mad at me, just take it up with Jesus and we'll meet in the altar and we'll pray together. Is that okay? Am I okay? I ain't getting no, I ain't getting no gunshots. I look like I'm doing okay. So the children of Israel was like that. And they wanted to live any old way that they wanted to. And they wanted to have everything God had for them. But they wouldn't fully trust God. Brother Ron, they kept. Okay, Holy Ghost. Their relationship with God was circumstantial. Meaning that I'll bless you, God, when everything's good. But when things go wrong and I don't understand, I'm going to resort back to my Jesus, help me, Holy Ghost, having an attitude having a spirit of discord and distendency. I don't even know if that's a word, but that's kind of what, how it flows out of me. There, there comes a time where that's got to stop. God is, okay, God. God is wanting to take us to the promised land. Individually and corporately. I feel this is a prophetic word over this house. God is wanting to take you to another place. We have been here for years and there has, oh, there has been lids that has continued to cap this roof. And I, I believe that God is wanting to take you from this place to that place. But it can't happen if we as individuals don't get ourselves together and come into the house of God and then we're together. My Jesus, I'm not saying this braggingly, me and the pastor can't do it all. Sister Jane and Sister Karen, they can't do it all. We're the body. We're the hands and feet of God. Every person in here has a gifting, has a calling, of some way, type, or form. And it doesn't mean that if, my Jesus, I'm not even gonna attempt to play. It doesn't mean, okay, I, was, I thought it was cool if it was working, but it's all right. That's all right, she didn't turn me off. See, I'm not called to do this. But it doesn't mean that if I'm not doing this, that I'm less significant than the door greeter out there that's shaking people's hands in the door. I mean, maybe you don't hear what I'm saying, because when you do, hold up, shy. what you're called to do, everything falls into place. Get this spiritual mindset of this pridefulness out of here. The Lord rebuke that in Jesus' mighty name. I, I, I came in here, and Sister Carmen Rodriguez, she used to be a door greeter. And that woman encouraged me in times that she had no idea. There's times that our pastor will go through things that you'll know nothing about. There's times that ministers help me, Holy Ghost, that people that I'm trying. Sister Heather, leaders, maybe let's go with leaders. Leaders go through things that you don't know nothing about, and they're not going to share that. This is truth. Is it okay to talk the truth in this house? Okay. But when you're an encourager... And you feel the wind of the Holy Ghost. Just come by and say, hey, Pastor, I've been praying for you. When you hear that, you know that the Holy Ghost has done interceded on your behalf and told Sister Karen, just go let him know that you're praying for him. And that's going to let him know, you know what, God, you see where I'm at. My Jesus, my Jesus, my Jesus, my Jesus. So, they wouldn't fully trust God. They kept coming up to situations, coming up to things, and they kept going back and forth, back and forth, and God said, oh, you know what? I'm done. I want to take you from here to over there. And you continue to stop it. 
you continue to stop in the middle where it gets hard, where it gets lonely, where it gets tough, and you choose not to push through that thing. Can I get somebody in the house to make up their mind today? Not tomorrow, not next week. Make up their mind today, Brother Ron, that I'm going to push past this mess. I'm going to lay this mess down and say, I'm tired of doing this. God has more for me. I'm a child of the king. I'm tired of walking through life depressed and busted and disgusted. I want God to have every bit of me. And when you do that, and you push past this place and you get to the other side. Who am I talking to? And you get to the other side and you look back and you say, wow. And you look at what God has for you. It's like, whoo. My Jesus. So the children of Israel was in that place. And God was through. But how, many know, how many people know that God's plan doesn't change? His promise is still valid. God's plan was still to take them to the promised land. God's plan is still to take you to the promised land. God's, God's plan is to still fulfill his promise that he promised you 15, 12 years ago. He said something to you overnight and you've held on to that. But little by little, because you're continuing to go back. Help me, Holy Ghost. You continue to go back. Eventually you forget the promise. But how many people know that God don't forget the promise and he's going to do whatever he's got to do? If he's got to say, you know what, let me let me let me tell Pastor Alex something to say. I'm going to tell you right now, 85, 90 percent of stuff I'm saying, it's all the Holy Ghost. There's nothing I had planned. I promise you that. So I don't know who you who you are or what you came in here with. But today, my friend, today is your day to lay everything down and push past this nonsense because God says I got more from you than what you see. My Jesus, my Jesus. So guess what? Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. When Moses died, guess what? Didn't catch God off guard. Your situation does not catch God off guard. You may think that it does by what you feel and what you experience, but God knew about it. He knew about it. So when Moses died, he had already handpicked another leader. He had already set forth provision to get you out of this mess. Who in the world am I preaching to up in here? He has already set for provision to get you out, to push you through. My Jesus, my Jesus. You see, you see God's plan and it never changes. God's plan was to take Sister Phyllis to the promised land. It's his plan. It is his desire. It is his will to not only have 85% of Phyllis, not 99.9, .9, but I want all of you. If you will let me have all of you, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to give you exactly what I promised you. That's because some of us can't handle what God's got us over here. So that's why we're going through this mess. Oh, my Jesus. Who am I talking to in here? God is so specific that what he's doing, he knows how to break you. He knows how to make you. So when you go through the trials and the fires of life, it is not meant to burn you up. It is not meant to tear you down. When I told this to my youth group last Wednesday night, I said when a, when a refinery puts the silver in there, he takes it out. And the only way he says if it's done is if he could see his reflection. My Jesus, all he's trying to do is to give you more of him in your life he's trying to break off old habits he's trying to crucify your flesh somebody in here needs to bless the Lord up in here so listen God's plan never changes tell your neighbors say God's plan never changes his promise is true. His promise is real. It's I feel like getting happy up in here. His promise doesn't stop just because you do. It's all the matter. Do you want to follow him or not? My Jesus, he set before the path for you, Aaliyah, and he's saying, I want you to do this. There's going to come time, sweetheart, that it's going to get hard, but it's in those times you need to lean on me, trust on me. And if you do that and you lay it all down and you keep your eyes on me, guess what, baby? You're going to get exactly to where I promised you was going to be. Oh, my Jesus. 
When you do that, Jesse, when you do that, when you lay it all down and say, you know what, I'm not picking it back up no more. Many times we come into church, we come here and we get a word from the Lord. The pastor may lay your hands on you, somebody else, and they may prophesy over your life. And you say, oh, thank you, Jesus. Woo, glory, hallelujah. And you go out and by Tuesday morning, you're right back to where you started. My Jesus, can we not get to a point where we say, God, I, yo, don't shake, I, give me your word and I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to cling. I'm going to cling to the promise of God. See, Jacob. My Jesus. Mm. Woo. I'm trying. I'm trying. I may run here in a minute. Not Jacob, Joshua. Check this out. Joshua and Caleb was the only two spies that said, hey, we can go kick their butts and take names. Hey, you see the promise over there? Woo! But see, the other, the other ten of them was like, did you see them giants? Are you kidding me? You see, you see that spirit of depression? Mm, looks kind of big for me. Mm, my Jesus. Hold on, my shot. Do you see them giants over there? I can't. I can't make it. I can't make it. We can't. We can't do it. Anxiety's over there. Uh, mm, my Jesus, what do you want to do now? There's giants in your way. And God says, I've given you the authority. Come on. I have given you the authority to slay giants. Yes. Yes. Was it not just a little shepherd boy, who came on the scene and said, who in the world is this uncircumcised Philistine talking about my daddy like that? Who does he think he is? That's it. That's it. And before Sister Jane. Before he stepped on the scene, listen, listen, this is for you. This is for you. Before he stepped on the scene, he was shepherding a flock. And did not the Bible say a lion jumped out? In the middle. Get off my shoe. Oh, I got some victory. Whew. And then a bear jumped out. I don't know if that's what it did, but that's kind of what, you know. <laughs> so in the middle, he knocked and killed a lion. He knocked and killed a bear. So that way, when the final place, when he showed up, oh, yeah. that when this giant showed up on the scene, had it not been for the lion, had it not been for the bear, guess what? He would have probably tucked tail and run. So ha. I don't know who I came to preach to today, Pastor, but I'm telling you right now, God knows what he's doing. So if you got a lion, if you got a bear in your life, my, my God has already given you the strength and the power to defeat that. So when you do, when you do and you get to the giant that's in your life, can I do this real quick? When you get to the giant who is in your life, you will be able to slay that thing. And guess what happened? After he knocked his little butt out. I'm trying. I'm trying. See, the cool thing is that the giant, huh, who do you think you are? Don't that sound like the devil? Who do you think you are? I am blood bought, son of God. Get out of my face. There is no. There is no power in hell that's got any authority over me. You can look the devil square in the face and say, in the name of Jesus, get your stuff and get out of my life. Get out of my face. Who do you think you are? And when the giant, hold up, I shot. Am I okay? And when the giant did this, you want a piece of this? Jesse, he didn't sit there and wait for the giant to come to him. Woo! He took off running. And that giant was over here. What? What about Shataya? Listen, listen, listen. And the giant got knocked down. That must have been a dumb looking sight. His big behind done fell, feet all up in the air. 
but he wasn't dead yet. Many times, church, we come in here and we may knock the giant down, but if we don't take the sword of the spirit, whoa, if we don't take the sword of the spirit and cut his head off, he's going to come back. And when he comes back, he's going to be ticked off. So what I love about it is that God had a plan. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He had a plan for David. David's supposed to be the king, but he's a shepherd right now. I got a way of moving things that nobody else can move. I got a way to open doors that nobody else can open. I have laid for you a path that I want you to take. And it's going to be scary at times. There's things that ain't going to make no sense. It's in those times where you got to trust me. My Jesus, you got to trust me. Sometimes, Pastor, can I talk to you for a minute? Sometimes when things are out of our control and we lose our grip on it, we tend to get a little faithless. Maybe I'm not preaching to nobody in here, but I'm telling the truth. When things get out of our control and we don't know what to do, Jesse, we tend to just back up a little bit and we tend not to want to put it in the hands of God. You tend to work, 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 work. Let me try to do it. Let me try to do it. Let me try to do it. And you wear yourself simply slap out. And God says, this ain't nothing but a lion. All you got to do is trust me. I've already given you power and authority over this thing to slay it. I am I am preparing you for my purpose. I am preparing you for greatness. I don't know who I'm prophesying over right now. I am preparing you to do my will. And without this, oh, without this process, you're not going to make it. You can't have it without this process. So the thing, so the thing that happened, David didn't stop. He knocked the giant down. The Bible says that the stone sunk into his head and he fell. And I was told that the armor that they wore, there was only one spot. Am I saying it right? If I'm saying it wrong, you can correct me. I was told that his armor, there was only one spot that it could go. But the fact of the matter is, is that when David released the stone, he wasn't releasing it in his own strength. He was releasing it in the power of the Holy Ghost and the blood of Jesus. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who does he think he is talking junk about my daddy? You come at me with sword and a spear, but I come at you. But I'm coming at you in the name of of the Lord does the Bible not say that his word is sharper than any double-edged sword then it will can it not slay the enemy if you read in the Bible when Jesus went to the wilderness there was one time excuse me three times documented where Satan came to him and it wasn't that Jesus threw his hands up I wish you would and whoo no he said for it is written somebody needs to get a get a hold of this real quick when you can get, oh my Jesus, when you can get inside your word and that word gets on the inside of you, you may not know when it's going to come out, but can I tell you, it's going to come out right on time. But you got to get to the place in your life where you say, you know what, I'm through with this. I'm done. I just want Jesus. Jesus is leading us to the promised land, Chuck. He's leading us. He's leading us individually, and he's leading us corporately. Let me tell you something. I've heard this thing that remedy is nothing but a sleeping giant. Can I tell you that there is possibility that are endless? My shatayo. How in the world can you put a fire inside this building? My Jesus, and keep it up inside of here. Can we not be a people who get before us, who get before God on our face and cry out until the glory of God falls and take the fire and go into our workforce and go into Walmart or any gas station and live the life of Jesus? What if you was the person you come in contact with at 1:30 at KFC? What if you were the only light of Jesus that they could see? What if you were the only hope for them? But you can't get out your feelings. You can't get out yourself enough to let God just deal with what he's got to deal with and move forward. Hallelujah. 
My Jesus. Pull up verse 5 for me real quick. Verse 5, verse 5, verse 5, verse 5. Now listen to this. Okay, Dad. Then Joshua told the people, he said, purify yourselves. For tomorrow, the Lord will do great wonders among you. Understand where they were at. Oh, my Jesus, I'm getting excited. I'm almost done. They was in a place. I don't know where to stand. I'm like really like amped right here. They came to the place where they camped. Promised land over there. Remedies destiny over there. Your destiny over there. They got to the place, Shasta, where they're right here. And the Bible says that there was something in the way. The river was flowing and it was overflowing the banks. The Jordan River was overflowing. The Bible says it's harvest time. And it's, it's, it's flowing. It's fast. It's moving. It ain't like you can just get up in there and whatever. Walk across when I want to. No. You need something to take place. That's why the Bible said Joshua went to the people. He said, I need you to purify yourself today. For, for tomorrow... I will do great and mighty things in your life. Oh, my Jesus. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Today, I don't know what you came in here with. Okay, Holy Ghost. Heather, come play for me. Today, I don't know what you came in here with. I don't know what's going on in your life. I have no idea. But God says today, you are to purify yourself. And I'm not talking about blatant sin. Yes. Let me, ex let, me, let, me, let me say something real quick. If you do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I'm telling you right now, it's the best decision you ever make in your life. He loves you more. He loves you more than you ever know. There's nothing you'll ever do that will make his love stop. He created you inside and out. And he said, if I come down, and they are the only ones that I have to pay the penalty for. I will do it and I will do it again. I will do it again. I will do it again. There's nothing that you'll ever do that will make me stop loving you. So he says to purify themselves. Scroll down for me. Go to six. Go to six. In the morning. Joshua said to the priest, lift up the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant signified the presence of God. And he said, lead the people across the river. But there's no way. But see, when you follow the Holy Ghost and you follow the unction of the Spirit, there's things that will move out your way that you didn't think was possible. There's no sickness. And so the Bible says that they went out and they started out and they went ahead of the people. The Spirit went ahead of the people. I feel the wind of the Holy Ghost up in this house. It's going from seat to seat, aisle to aisle. It's up in this house and the Holy Ghost is leading you. He's leading you to a place that he says, Brother, I'm going to take you higher than you ever thought before. But there's things in your life that you got to let go of. You got to let go of mistakes. You got to let go of old habits. You got to let go of bad attitudes. You got to let go of the past because I'm not in the past. I'm in the future, baby. And I'm right here with you. You don't have to worry. You don't have to stress anymore. I got your back. I'm going to take you. But you have to purify yourself. You want the promise? You want what God's got for you? Purify yourself. You cannot have the promise. You cannot have the fullness of God without making things right before God. If there's something in your life that's holding you back, that's holding you down, ta. This is what I hear the Holy Ghost say. I'm going to preach to Heather. You just listen for a minute. I've already given you the rocks inside of you that all you have to do is pick it up. Because he's already given you victory over. You don't feel it. You don't see it. All you see is that 
nine foot giant looking back at you and say you'll never make it but I want to tell you when David was led by the Holy Ghost and he let that stone fly that giant drop he said no I'm not letting you just fall I'm gonna get over you and I'm gonna take the very weapon that you come against me with and I'm gonna cut your head off And when he cut his head off, Pastor, he didn't leave it there. Give me this thing. It's a trophy. This thing was a reminder to David, never again. I wonder if he walked by a tree and went like this. Gone. Never again. Today, if you respond to the call and you come and get serious with me, God says, I will let you see the giant slayed. You will not only knock down the giant, but you will pick up the weapon that he had against you. And I've already given you the power, but I'm going to let you see it. I'm going to let you feel it. Peace, victory, power. Oh, my Jesus. Put verse 17 back up. Verse 17, verse 17. Now listen. All the way down where it says they waited. I don't shake. Come here, Pastor. Come here. Uh, just can you stand up there for a minute? Leader of the house. Man of God. You know, Pastor, I was sitting here one Sunday and God spoke to me a word, something about you. And this is the word he said to me. He said, mighty man of God. He didn't just say man of God. He says, mighty man of God I'm not putting them on a pedestal church I'm just telling you what he said to me they waited there waiting man of God Holy Ghost spirit waiting until the whole nation God is waiting on you God is waiting on you remedy God is waiting on you God says, I've already stepped in before you. I've already made a way where there seems to be no way. And God says, I'm waiting on you. You want it, you come and get it. And when they went in, when all of them, we may have a couple stragglers, but my God, I'd wait on the stragglers because God waited on me. When we respond to the call, church, this is an open opportunity I just feel the Holy Ghost in here saying this this is an open opportunity a wide open door for you there's no condemnation there's nothing I'm going to hold against you says the Lord all you have to do is respond all you have to do is respond I'm waiting in the middle of the Jordan River isn't it amazing isn't it amazing that the Jordan River is where the promised Messiah was identified you don't believe me read your Bible So God says, I'm waiting on you. I don't know what you're waiting on me to say for. If the Holy Ghost has done dealt, spoke to you, these altars are open. Y'all need you to come. I need you to move now. I don't need you to sit there and wait. I don't want you to miss this opportunity. While the waters is stirred, while the waters is stirred, while God has opened up a window from heaven and said, you know what? I want more for my people. If you want it, you come and get it. In the powerful, mighty name of Jesus. Hold on, I want you to play that. In a, I want you to sing that in a minute. Listen, 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 listen. If you are here, if you are here, you may not understand what's going on all the way. But if you are here and your relationship with Christ is not where it needs to be, listen, hear the word of the Lord. If your relationship is not where it's supposed to be, I don't know what background you came to, but you know that everything I'm saying is the truth. You've heard this before. And you feel the stirring inside of you. If there's something in your life that's not right, and you need to get it right before the Lord, God says right now, right now is your time. 
I want you down here right now. And God says, Philip, I'm going to meet you with open arms. Open arms. It's not like a condemning God. He doesn't have a gavel in his hand waiting to bust you in the head because you messed up. He said, if you just come to me, I'm going to wrap my loving arms around you. You're going to experience so much love that you ain't going to know what to do. Now, if you're into this place, if you're in this place right now and you want the Holy Ghost, you want the promise of God, but you're having issues, you're having struggles. God says, I don't condemn you. I love you just as much as I did today, as I did yesterday, as much as you're struggling. God says today, if you want my deliverance, come down and just receive from me. Holding nothing. All of me. 
this way we got somebody praying for the Holy Ghost right now I want you to I want you to stretch your hand this way and just begin to pray just stretch your hand right here and just begin to pray we've got people that are I'm thankful that people are still praying for the Holy Ghost I'm, I'm thankful that people are still praying for the fire of the Holy Ghost come on join with them in prayer join with him in prayer Father, in the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, come. Holy Ghost, come. Spirit of God, come. Spirit of God, come. Fire of the Holy Spirit, come upon Jesus. Fill him up to overflow. God, it's your gift to give. God, it's your gift to give. God, we worship you. God, you see an open vessel. You see an availability, God. Fill him up to overflow, Jesus. Fill him up to overflow. 